The first thing you're going to want to do is go over to the left section of your screen, right click and click import, then go over to where it says file and click that. This is where you will find the audios, clips, or pictures from your downloads in your computer. Once you see your file in that little corner, you're going to want to drag it into this tiny box where it'll then show on the big screen, otherwise known as your composition. This is called your preview, where you play the clip, but you can also, for a shortcut, press the spacebar. Underneath, you have your effects and presets. This is where you drag your effects that will help you make transitions later on. There are a lot of features down here, but for beginners purposes, we're just going to focus on these two buttons right here. You want to always have these turned on. They ensure that your edit is going to be smooth once you start doing transitions and stuff. If you move up here, this is called your composition settings. This is where you can adjust the size, not of like the pictures in your edit, but like the actual edit itself. And right down here is where you change how long the entire edit is, like the whole duration. This hand tool allows you to move the edit without moving the pictures to look at them. This tool allows you to zoom into the edit, sometimes a little too up close and personal. This tool changes the center, so like if you want to do a transition, it will change where the transition starts from the picture. This tool basically lets you crop the photo. It can also be a different shape than a rectangle. If you click the tool again, it gives you different options. This is called your pen tool, and it's basically how you mask something or someone in a clip. You basically trace around the figure, and afterwards, once you connect it at the end, the background is gone. This is your text tool that makes a text layer where if you double click, you can type anything you want. And if you click here, you can also change the font to whatever you'd like. Before doing a transition, you're gonna wanna split the clips. And by doing this, you press Command Shift D on your keyboard. Before every transition you do, you always wanna go to your effects and presets, type motion tile and drag it into your clip. I'm just going to do a basic zoom transition by pressing S on my keyboard. To indicate where the transition begins, you're going to want to press this keyframe. Then to indicate where the transition ends, you're going to go all the way to the end and right click and press reset. Once you have your two keyframes, you're going to want to hold click and make a box, highlight a box around your keyframes. Then you're gonna right click and where it goes, click where it says Easy Ease. Now, still having your keyframes highlighted, you're gonna click this little graph box right here. This helps the speed of your transition because see how slow it looks before you add a graph. Now, you might have to play with your graphs to get them how you want to, but usually there are two common graphs, one looking like this. For the next part of the transition, you're going to want to start with the opposite of where the first part of your transition left off. See, I ended the last one at 300, so I started the second one around 60, like made it smaller. Then when it comes to keyframes, you're going to do the same concept as before. If you're confused, just watch me. I promise it's not hard to follow. The main difference of this part of the transition is that it's going to be a different graph. This graph stuff might seem confusing at first, but I promise over time, it becomes muscle memory. Here is just a quick example of a slowed zoom. Now, during this process, if you feel you messed up or pressed the wrong button, you can always go back to reset your layout by clicking Reset to Save Layout. Once your edit is finished, you have to do what's called rendering. You don't just save the edit and it's just there on your desktop. You go to Composition, Add to Render Queue, hit lossless and all I do is change the audio output so there's audio when it's finished rendering. Press OK, then render. Now depending on how many effects slash transitions you use, this could take a while. I have a more in-depth tutorial on rendering and how to save After Effects edits to your phone in another one of my YouTube videos that you can go check out on the i above. Here are some keyboard shortcuts that I find really helpful that you can screenshot if you want to refer to them later.